There is a lot of people out there that get scammed from completely nonsense domains, but if you have at least a basic, basic technical sense, it needs to sound somewhat legitimate. YouTube support staff.com, support from YouTube.com, pay with PayPal.com, and things like that. But I don't think that any of you guys would fall for that. But what if there was a way to inject a malicious file into a completely safe and completely normal project in a way that could trick even the most technically minded individuals? Will look no further than GitHub issues, comments, and pull requests. But to understand this, we need to go back just a little bit. Just a few days ago, McAfee, yes, that McAfee, released a new blog post, Redline Stealer, a novel approach, whereby two pieces of fake game cheat software, Cheat Lab and Cheetah Pro, were being distributed in a fairly interesting way. Now, how the malware actually functions isn't really that relevant for today's video, but I'll leave the report linked in the description down below. The one part I do want to mention is how it propagates itself, or better yet, how you propagate it. Welcome to Cheat Lab Demo. To unlock the complete version, simply share this program with your friend. Once you do that, the program will automatically unlock, then enter the key. So the way it gets around is you go and infect your friends before you know you're infected. This is a giga brain strategy to share malware. But the part I want to focus on is where you downloaded the initial files from github.com slash microsoft slash vcpkg slash files slash a set of numbers then the name of the file also github.com slash microsoft slash stl slash files slash a set of numbers and then the file these are not fake repos on a fake microsoft account these are the actual repos directly from microsoft nothing weird at all about them the first repo is a C++ library manager, and the second is Microsoft's implementation of the C++ standard library. And to make matters worse, the file had been present since February 13th, 2024. It's been there for a couple of months. So you might be thinking then, what, did the repo get compromised? Was the account compromised? Was something weird going on here and nobody at Microsoft noticed what was happening? No, it's actually much simpler than that. This was an exploit of an oversight in a completely normal GitHub function that most of us have probably used at least a couple of times. Attaching a file to a comment, issue, or pull request. Now, I'll be demonstrating this on my own repo, don't go and make random issues, PRs, and comments on repos you don't own. It is a waste of everybody's time. So, if we go and make a new issue, here we can go and write our description, write our title, all that fun stuff. We don't care about that. The only thing we care about is this right here. Or if you want to, drag a file in. So let's drag in this right here. This is going to generate a URL. This is going to be github.com slash Brody Robertson slash bookmenu.py slash assets slash a set of numbers. This is slightly different from what we saw before, but this is the URL that is generated for images and videos. Let's try an archive, document, or basically any other file. And there we go. github.com slash Brody Robertson slash bookmenu-py slash files slash a set of numbers slash the file name. But why does this matter? Well, consider this. I have not published the issue, but if we go and grab this link here, put it in our browser, it already works. Even though we have not published the issue, the link is already functional. It is already publicly available on GitHub's content distribution network. So as long as we can make an issue, pull request, or comment, we can attach a file to any repo without having any commit rights. This is part one of the problem. This could be mitigated by changing this from being the actual name of the user and repo to the ID of the user and repo, then it looks a lot less legitimate. That's only a minor thing though. The next part's the real problem. Now you can argue it makes sense in the draft state, but the real problem is if you just didn't post the issue, didn't post the comment, or didn't post the pull request, the link 
continued to work. Now, it's still working at this point, but at this point, it's only temporary and will stop working in a couple of minutes. Previously, it was basically permanent. As we can see now, thanks to them fixing this, the file has been removed. But before fixing it, it also worked if you made a comment and then the comment was deleted. Previously, the file was basically always going to be attached to the repo and the developer of the repo couldn't do anything about it. The only way they could break these links was deleting the entire repo. Now, anyone with half a brain is probably going to realize, hmm, maybe the game cheat on the Microsoft GitHub account isn't real. Maybe there's something weird going on here. They might not understand, like, how it's working, but it's going to look weird. Imagine a more sensible use case, though. A threat actor could upload a malware executable in NVIDIA's driver install repo that pretends to be a new driver fixing issues in a popular game. The exact same could be done for AMD or Intel as well. Or a threat actor could upload a file in a comment to the Google Chromium source code and pretend it's a new test version of the web browser. Or what if you want to start a Twitter hate campaign and tarnish the reputation of a repo? So you go and attach some compromising or illegal material and say, look, look, this repo has this bad material on it. The developers are terrible people. A lot of people were not going to understand how that file got there and the fact that you injected the file, they will see, oh, it's from an official account. There must be something weird going on here. There is one single way a dev could have stopped this. Blocking issue, PR, and comment creation, or at least blocking it to people outside of the project only letting people you trust make use of it. There is a slight issue with that from the GitHub support page. Enabling an interaction limit for a repository restricts certain users from commenting, opening issues, creating pull requests, and reacting with emojis, editing existing comments, and editing titles of issues and pull requests. When you enable an interaction limit, you can choose a duration for 24 hours, 3 days, 1 week, 1 month, or 6 months. After the duration of your limit passes, users can resume normal activity in your repository. So unless you lock it down to like a GitHub organization or invited members only, you're basically screwed. Also doing this if GitHub is your main form of communication massively slows down the development of your project and makes it really, really hard for users to report things. Now I have no idea how this happened. This got a lot of public attention fairly recently, but this is not publicly new. There is a report about this from March 3rd, not doing anything different, operating in the exact same way. Malware was already out there in the public using this exploit and was using it for a couple of months. I don't know if the guy who wrote this report just didn't contact any news outlets or they just didn't think it was an interesting story or what the deal was because I only heard about this a few days ago. Whilst GitHub has not said anything on this matter, they haven't been ignoring it. They've been fixing it silently and just don't particularly want to talk about it. So as we saw, if you now don't go and publish the issue, the file is going to be removed from the CDN. Also, if a comment is deleted that has a file attached to it, that is also going to be removed. This was clearly an oversight that nobody even realized could be exploited. It's one of those things where it's probably always worked like this, and maybe at some point, maybe after a couple of months, the file is deleted. But nobody thought, hmm, is there a way that somebody could distribute malware with this? Maybe we should clean things up just a little bit quicker. Now, this is also likely due to it being an oversight. So you know how GitHub is really incessant on scanning repos and telling you, hey, there's a CVE here. Hey, this dependency is outdated. It has a problem with it. Go fix the problem. You constantly get notifications about that with any repo you have, especially if it's something you just haven't touched in a couple of years but they weren't doing any malware scanning on the files uploaded. You could upload a file, any file whatsoever. Doesn't matter if it's well-known malware that everybody knows is malware, every antivirus scanner reports as malware, 
they didn't care. They just weren't scanning it. They probably should have been. But like with what I said before, they probably just didn't realize that anyone was going to try to upload malware through this method, so they just didn't think it was a good idea to go and fix. But what do you think? Were you aware of this exploit? Have you seen it in use and were kind of confused about what was going on? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and the Barrow Pay link in the description down below. That is going to be it for me and good job, GitHub.